Like us, and you say fuck you to the mainstream, then welcome aboard. We want to, we want you to elevate your life by going underground. And by that, we mean supporting independent music, independent art, independent anything. We just don't want to be on the main road. Welcome to the Corpse Paint Show. And with me to my right, and we're live from Dallas, Texas, is Mr. James Malone. Yes, guitar shredder extraordinaire. From Arsis, fucking Arsis. What's up? Welcome aboard. Oh, thank you for having me. To your right is Mr. Logan Mul Mulligan. Mulligan, and yeah. Mulligan, <laughs> Mulligan. What is your name? Logan Mulligan. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> However you want to say it, I don't care. And uh, this guy's a badass drummer. Just in oh, case awesome, you man. might need extra help in the studio or something. I I'm just saying, James. <laughs> just, just All right. <laughs> And Janie Slash. Hello, Janie. Hello. It's good to see you. What have you got on the eyeballs? You got eyeballs? Uh -huh. Yeah, they match the color of my hair. So I'm with it. That's perfect. <laughs> Your hair looks really good. Thanks. She used to have green streaks in it. And, Everybody uh, else it is like in badass bands. It, yeah, and this is Janie. We with could just the cool see hair. through her head <laughs> with a green screen backdrop. <laughs> yeah, I had to get rid of the green. So we're glad to have James Malone here and Logan Mulligan. And. Arsis's new release coming out, you tell us when, in a couple of weeks. Um, November 2nd, so I guess Day of the Dead, technically. Perfect. So, yes, yeah, perfect. Absolutely. It's a great date. It's I called know. Visitant, and that's what you can see uh, behind us here. New album from Melodic Tech Death Masters, Arsis. And uh, that one, th look, this is one I've been playing a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the last one, Unwelcome. Yeah, Unwelcome. Unwelcome, and it's got the cool, like, six-song EP added it to does, the... It does, actually, yeah. I always forget about that. It's actually being a thing, but it is a thing, so it's this, on there. This could be a double, almost. I mean, it's, it, it could, it's actually. badass. So. It's really good. And uh, a couple of favorites are um, Handbook for the Recently Deceased. Okay, cool. Uh, can I ask you a little about... Um, the song is uh, Lies... Uh, no One Lies? No One Lies to the Dead? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No One Lies. Kind of a favorite. Okay, sure. And then I'm reading the lyrics... Mulligan, I'm reading. So, uh, uh, Logan, I'm sorry, man. Whatever you want to call me, man. No, I'm, just, I'm just here. I'm here. Whatever. Logan. So, and uh, so there's a reference to uh, no one lies mm -hmm. with the dead. Uh huh. And I'm thinking, well, we have uh, we we have some people who like lying with the dead. Do you? Yeah. Okay. yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they're fans of the show that are into that. Really? <laughs> I, and. You know, whatever blows your skirt up the highest. Janie Slash, are you wearing a skirt? No, you told me to change out of the skirt that I was wearing. I'm wearing shorts. Okay. All right. I was wearing a skirt earlier. No, I mean, it, just whatever makes you happy. I guess if somebody enjoys lying with the dead, then I, I, who am I to say that no one lies with the dead? Because somebody probably does, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Well, I mean, necromantic. Necromantic, the movie. For sure. I, I've never actually seen it, but I've heard tale. <laughs> but but did you intend and it, like Silver Tongue Devil, his former band, they some some of the lyrics they intend to have a double meaning. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah no I, I, absolutely I'm but you know it, it's that album came out a little while ago so it's hard for me to put my head self back in that headspace. But um, I, yeah I'm sure there was some sort of there's always like some sort of weird word play or double meaning involved. So yeah no absolutely that absolutely was. I'm saying this like I'm uh, like positive about it, but I'm pretty sure that was the intent. So cool. yeah. yeah and, I, well, I, so what's your headspace now? Yeah, is yeah. visitant. Sure. Yeah. And, and, oh. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Sorry. I, no, I was just going to say, uh, we're going to show the video of, okay. that, of that first single coming up here shortly. Sure. But uh, Badass, and I, I saw you referencing something that this was horror movie inspired. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much every every song is like kind of, and when I say inspired by like a different horror film, not not in the sense that uh, I'm like necessarily trying to tell like a story with the lyrics, but um, just uh, as we would finish like writing a song for the album, um, just like what visuals would come to my mind like as I was listening to the music and then I would like relate that to some visuals from like a, a horror movie that I may be interested in and kind of use that as like my inspiration for crafting the lyrics um so it's it's not it's it's very everything's very vague everything I always I'm always like kind of all vague. your lyrics yeah. are kind of vague yeah, yeah absolutely so um but yeah that that's you know very loosely and I just I feel like with the the aesthetics of of death metal um and uh, in general, like it lends itself very easily to to the horror movies and films and whatnot. And they just um, everything like definitely I think ties together like pretty well. Um, so for sure. yeah, good, there we good. go. Uh, the fans want to hear a lot of celebration of guilt, don't they? Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, Which is a great release. And, sure. But, but you get to blast us with a lot of visiting, too. Yeah, yeah. When we go see you at Gas Monkey. Absolutely. I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, Celebration of Guilt is the, uh, probably the fan favorite. But uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm 38. I turned 38 years old this year. And um, the, uh, the demos for Celebration of Guilt, I started recording those when I was, like, 18. So we're, we're talking, like, 20 years removed from whatever... Um, was going on in my head for like the writing process for that record um and you know I, I get that people like love and cherish that record and you know some people are like oh i just want another celebration of guilt and it's like well I, I and mean, that's cool but um you know if you show me an artist that like just has never changed throughout their career then it's probably the mark of a bad artist right. so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. evolution's important yeah, it's yeah. important to evolve as an artist so whether and whether or not you like that evolution or not i guess is like you know all, all a matter of personal taste but um you know, it is what it is. How's your voice? I mean, it's all right. It's good. Yeah. All right. You do. You do a lot of extreme. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, push with it. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, yeah. um, yeah. And I mean, I, I, for for being 38 and still at it, I think. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's where it is. Is so. there is there uh, you know something you do after every gig and that is I don't know. Uh, well, for a very or, long uh, time, I, I um I didn't take care of myself very well. I was a chain smoker for almost for like 18 years and you know drank an awful lot at different times in my life and um I, all those things like tax on your voice but i mean i i quit drinking a couple years ago i don't smoke anymore um so yeah i think i think if anything my voice sounds like clearer and maybe like a little more precise than it used to um but yeah it is visitant purposefully a different vocal sound Oh, I don't think it's that different. Though. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, I, I, some people are like, oh man, it sounds different. But I, like, I, to me, like, I don't hear it as being like that vastly different. Like, I mean, sure. Like I said, I think if anything, like maybe like a little, um, like a little more focused, uh, and, um, and whatnot. But I don't think it, to oh. me, it, to okay. me, it doesn't, I'm not like, wow, that sounds like completely different than okay. this or that. Right. So, um, do I sound different than I did when I was like 21? Yeah, I absolutely do. But like, if we look at, um, so I've been doing this band for like 15 years now. Let's just take a look at uh, a band like um, like Death. I mean, the Chuck Shoulder, like Rest in Peace or whatever. But like, if we listen to every Death release, like the way that he sounded in 1987 versus the way he sounded 10 years later in 1997, it sounds like two completely different people. Like you could like almost pass it off as like a different vocalist. So to say that like, you know people's vo voices like never change or whatnot and like I, it's really kind of silly because they absolutely do yeah um and even take it like for instance like i mean i don't know this for a fact but i mean um you know i'm pretty sure Def leopard sings their uh, the stuff that was recorded in e standard is now played in d standard just because it's a, yeah. a step like i mean shit happens as you get older so you know, <laughs> it is what it is and you just kind of you make the most of it i think Logan, you're gonna love this video we show of their new song. It's called "Tricking the Gods," right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. And uh, it's very sacrilegious. Okay. So <laughs> right it on. belongs on this show. We're, yeah. we're just gonna show it nonstop. Is what we're gonna do. <laughs> oh, do it. it. <laughs>
for like I'm, an hour and a half. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, that would be on like a Sunday that we're out of town. We can't do okay. the show. We, yeah. If you if you're okay with it, we we would just put that on. <laughs> just the the Arsis Marathon. <laughs> Arsis Marathon. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, all right. So Logan is making a movie, and we're going to yes. talk a lot about that. So, uh, well, you, you take over, Logan. I mean, it's it's Benedictus. It is. It's Benedictus, uh, which is Latin for blessed, um, which is, I, I mean, it's, a, it's an ironic title. Um, and so uh, I kind of... Short film I ever wrote. It was the first script I ever uh, decided to to pursue, and so uh, throughout this year and a half, I, I kind of been developing this story, um, building on to the to the narrative, and um, just trying to go through the process of, of getting this film into production any way that I could. Um, and so uh, it's a story about a girl who. Uh, wanders into the woods with some friends just searching for a party um, you know like we all do and uh, they uh, they encounter a cult um, and so this cult kind of you know roughs them up and it changes a lot of the the relationship between this girl and her father uh, who, who's a religious a religious guy um, and there's a really big twist that I just I can't spoil it just because it's it's just too gnarly so <laughs> Well, yeah, so, you want them to come see it. Yeah, you can't yeah, tell them, hey, I, this is the whole story. But I feel like it's like sometimes I feel like I, I just need to tease it enough to where people will come sure. see it because it's like I'm, I'm unknown to people. But then at the same time, it's like, do I spoil it so then they can see like what kind of visuals I'm going to create with that kind of twist and that kind of narrative story? But I don't know. I, I think I'm going to choose to just, you know, play it safe. So, so. what's your timeline to get it completed? Uh, so we're in uh, currently we're in pre-production right now. Uh, we uh, we start shooting in two weeks. Uh, September twenty first is our first day of shooting. So all right, we've got some awesome. uh, three days of shooting. You've got so, cast. So. You've got yeah, fully this, cast, yeah. full crew, yeah. everything. So uh, your producer is here in the studio with us. She is yes, Madison. Madison. And I, I saw her on one of your promo videos for yes. the movie. And uh, yeah, man. And y you raised a little bit of money online. I know you're still trying to get some funds in to make this. It'll yeah. be a short. It'll be a horror movie, right? And you gave us a, a brief storyline there. Sounds good. Right. We want yeah, you to yeah. stay in touch with us, man. And, Absolutely. And how this goes. I am more than happy. We support independent and new filmmakers, for sure. What is your plan after you get it completed? Are you going to submit to festivals? Yeah, or? yeah, definitely. Uh, South by Southwest is probably my like holy grail of, of things that I want to try to pursue. Um, but I'd love to do like a uh, local screenings and just kind of just get it out there to to where people can see it. And so people can kind of see like what I'm into, what I'm trying to do, and and hopefully just just build up from there and and try to you know pursue this full time forever. So it's crazy. It's kind of like music. You want ears and eyeballs. Yeah. And definitely. you want people to hold a physical thing in their hand of your here it is your release. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and sure. and, th and that's that's the battle. You you know, there's a lot of noise out there, mm -hmm. and I hope that we can kind of help in that. Yeah, know, absolutely. Getting the message out through that noise to those who are interested in in extreme metal and horror. Yeah, they definitely go hand in hand, like he was saying. So. Oh yeah, it lends itself pretty well. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, and and your video is just is just so fun. Oh, well, thanks, now, man. Yeah. There's all right. It starts with this image of mm -hmm. this person, and she looks kind of familiar to me. I'm not oh. sure. Yeah. If it is maybe <laughs> someone I've met. I think I think so. Absolutely. And and uh, right. but it is well done. Yeah, yeah. The makeup <laughs> was really well done, actually, for it. Um, I forget the makeup artist's name. Heather. Heather Something or Heather. So <laughs> no, no. Um. So the the guy that shout um, out to her. Um, the guy that pro um, produced, uh, well, not produced, but uh, directed and wrote and directed it. He was. And I guess produced because he was kind of in charge of finding locations and the talent and whatnot. So he's the one who hooked up the, the makeup artist. And I can't for life me cannot remember her last name, but um, maybe it'll come to me. So maybe I never knew it, but maybe it'll still come to me. I have no idea. Um, hey, can we, before we go to that video, yes. can we talk a second about Brandon Ellis? Yeah, what about? Yes, yeah, yeah. so he's on the new record. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, but, but he moved on to Black Dahlia. 
Well, he's been in both bands simultaneously. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So he was on Unwelcome, and he's on uh, the new record as well. Um, but yeah, he joined yeah. Black Dahlia like two and a half years, three years ago, maybe? Yeah. At this point, something like that. So, um, but yeah, no, he's been doing both bands. Um, but we haven't exactly been the most active either. So I guess we'll, you know, see what happens. But, but when we see you next month, and on this bloodletting tour, yes, the new guitarist is... Uh, well, Brandon will be like able to do like some limited participation in the cool. tour. Um, okay. okay. But uh, we will have um, possibly somebody going in. For okay. What okay. Can't okay. Do. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I didn't. Understand oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Badass. Uh, yeah, he's still still in the band. So, do yeah. do you get offended when people call you Spider Fingers? No, not, ne <laughs> no, oh, <okay>. not necessarily. <laughs> I, I can't say I've ever been called Spider Fingers. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, that I remember. Where did you get that from? I, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm like James. It's like, maybe I didn't know that, but now I do know that. Yeah. So, and Logan knows what I'm talking about. Thing, this is a badass drummer. <laughs> okay. And I so, can't uh, say that I know what you're well, talking no, about. Well, no, you've got a guitarist. It's okay. I don't and, know what he's talking about most times, <laughs> and I live with him. you got a guitarist in STD. That yes. Does the, you know, Alex, a lot of, a lot of great, the Serbian shredder. A lot of great shredder. <laughs> you know, we used Alex in a routine one time. You did? At the burlesque show. Yeah. <laughs> We killed him, and then I, I uh, stole all his money, and then stripped that just sounds like a normal Saturday for Alex, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was great. We need to do that again. Yeah, do it. <clears throat> you didn't know that about that? I he did always, not. No. Every time I hang out with him, he's like, "Hey, tell him about Mr. Fister." I'm like, "Oh, jeez." Oh, so his name. Alex is Alex is a gnarly guy. <laughs> I remember one one time uh, we played Alex's birthday show at Tomcats, and he got beyond wasted. And uh, it was it was the funniest thing to watch ever. Like just he was just just messing up songs left and right, but nobody cared because it was his birthday. birthday party. And it was it was gnarly. Alex is a partier for sure. So let's talk about <laughs> bloodletting North America. Yes, for a moment. Okay. This is a badass package. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. Well yeah, put I'm together pumped. for sure. You guys are co-headlining with Decrepit Birth. Yes. And then we've got uh, we got Internal Bleeding. Mm -hmm. They've got a great fan base. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. And um, Pyrexia, Within Destruction. Mm -hmm. And a, a Dallas band called I Am Destruction. Okay. Yes, which, I, I think I've checked them out before. Yeah. Great. They're great. Yeah. So the word is, get there early. Mm -hmm. And this is on October 16th. There it is. Yes. All these great bands. Uh, at Gas Monkey. But... I believe Alice Cooper's playing the same night, like down the street. Oh, oh check that out too. Check that out. Too. Nah, nah. Go see Internal Bleeding and Decrepit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Arsis. Look, uh, this will be outside on a cool October evening. Cool for D Dallas standards. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cool. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, no, we like already E2. know. Yeah. The moon is going to be full. Yeah. It's going to be some clouds, and okay. there's going to be loud music, and it's going to be a nice, comfortable outdoor. It's, a yeah, it, it's amazing after living here for a couple of years like your your uh criteria for for uh what is cool and what is hot like d drastically changes so i'm sure maybe the to, to people back home up north where i'm from uh it's still gonna be very hot but <laughs> by our standards now yes i'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll be, a, little be a nice light jacket hoodie weather <laughs> So you're you're on tour for like a full month, and it's almost like almost every night. Yes, yeah. And it's craziness out there, and you, you I know you got rabid fans that are going to be sweating out there, even if it's cold out. For sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Making a big pit. And, and, I, hopefully, and, yeah. I mean, if yeah. if we're doing it right, maybe. Can Can <laughs> Logan sure. and I jump on stage when you're playing, and then just jump out and cry? Uh, that's all you, man. Yeah, you have fun I'm, with that. I'm not down for that. Uh -huh. I don't think I. I don't trust I people don't to want catch to me. Either. Oh, you don't. Like no, no, I don't. I had that one people. experience where I, I ended up in a table. So yeah. we doing that again? It was an accident. Was it the guy climbing over your shoulders to get on the stage? No, that was a New Year's Eve, and I was on stage, and I thought somebody wanted to hug, but really he just wanted to try to crowd surf me, and then we fell into a table. <laughs> we were both drunk. Clearly. Well, okay. You were behind me. You braced it. You're technically the one that fell into the table. To paint the picture. It was a small crowd, and the guy on the stage, who was a fan, uh, wanted to leap into the crowd. Well, Janie Slash was about the only one in the crowd. No, 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 that's not what happened. That's never happened. He's making shit up. What happened was, was I was on stage, go-go dancing, and there was a guy in the crowd, and he was, like, doing this. And I was like, oh, he wants a hug. And so I went to go give him a hug, but it wasn't a hug. He wanted to try to crowd surf me, and we both fell into a table. 
<laughs> Did you know this person? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was so like, I why, why, why were you just assuming he wanted to hug? No, yeah, I knew yeah. this person. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Trusting this person. individual. <laughs> it was really dumb, and I was really drunk, and I'm not a hugger. I don't hug people. That's what's so weird about it. But I was so happy because it was New Year's Eve, and I was drunk. So, so to visualize this. And then I, I was told so not to do that again. Slash, and then she kind of comes up. I like down. how he's telling this story, and that's, yeah, he doesn't clearly remember. Oh, you were, you, you ended up upside down. I do remember. In a table. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Nothing broke and nobody got hurt. It was all good times. I'm sure I've, I've seen worse happen. We want to know where fans can get visitant. Um, so, well, after November 2nd, I'm sure they can get it um, wherever they buy CDs these days. Not I mean, Best I, Buy. I, I, not Best Buy. <laughs> I don't think they do that anymore. Man. But um, you can pre-order it now. Uh, there we via, go. Yeah, via Nuclear. If you're in North America, go to Nuclear Blast. If you're in Europe or the rest of the world, go to Agonia Records. And then you can also pre-order through Indie Merch through our own like web store. Um, but if you just went to simply go to arsisofficial.com, I think it's kind of like a portal for like everything. Ooh, I so, like yeah. that you guys have cassette there, tapes. Yeah, yeah. There's your, there's your awesome. website. Yeah. Cassettes are where it's at. Cassettes yeah. are awesome. Okay. I, I collect cassettes. That's oh, kind of like do. what I could collect okay. at this point. No, I do well, too. Look. Yeah. That's what I brought. And look, look guys, here's That's what I bought way to for listen to $39. Music. Look at this, Natasha. Cassette to MP3. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, that's that's amazing. That's awesome, man. Cassette to MP3. Yeah. And I tried it today yeah. and it worked. Works. It works. It worked. Yes. Now, my question is, is I guess after the fact, you have to go into some sort of program and kind of like split up the tracks if you want to kind of, or, I mean, the thing, honestly, the thing I like about cassettes is it forces you to listen to the album yes. actively, like in its entirety, um, as opposed to just being able to cherry pick and skip around. Yeah, so I yeah. like, it, it's really hard to skip around on a cassette. So like I said, you're, you're like, you're in it to win it, so to speak. If you're putting it on, like you're probably going to keep it on and just like, see where it takes you which is i mean i grew up with cassettes i'm like i'm pretty old i at definitely this point. did not um, i grew up with cassettes too so. so it um it definitely it's a different experience than like what i think people are accustomed to these days it's like the fun. analog of vinyl with like just better functionality like, yeah it's way more functional uh, absolutely and yeah. um I'll defend cassettes it's all more, day. It's more portable too vinyl's not very portable I yeah, think, yeah i think the the pitfall of cassettes was the um the packaging not being as elaborate as vinyl um, or CDs, even for that matter. That I think some people did complain about that, but as far as um, I don't know, I just I, I dig it and um, I like the uh, it, it has a tone to it for sure. Like when you're listening to cassette, it's like uh, you know, I mean, uh, my my girlfriend will tell you I'm putting on like Pet Shop Boys cassettes to like clean the apartment, and that's like my thing. I just that's what I'm We're into. We're finding so. out so much today. Yeah. About our death metal master, <laughs> he listens to '80s music. You can't listen to death metal, dude. Tears for Fears, me. man. Dude, I Tears for Fears to, is great. Dude, I love Tears okay. for Fears. Is this the point where we talk about uh, pseudo echo and and who's the other guy, Corey Hart? Or, oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. We're, we're, it's, on, it's on this. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we did. We did a cover of Sunglasses at Night. Okay, so. and so you take this this song mm -hmm. and make it so dark, yeah, and so evil and so fast. There's that little breakdown in, yeah. in there, in it, but it is, it, it is, it is such a reimagining of this song. Mm -hmm. Wow, good job. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah we we try to uh, do that uh, like whenever possible. And one, like one of the really early Arsis records, we did a Depeche Mode cover of uh, the things you said, and that that's probably pretty. I mean, I say unrecognizable, but uh, yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> probably. <laughs> do you get any pushback from? Not so much, no. Um, in fact, fans, you know. So we covered an Alice Cooper song on our second album. It's called "Roses on White Lace," and we still, like, honestly, like people talk about that probably more, oh. more than almost as much as "Celebration of Guilt." "Roses on White Lace," "Time for Disease," like whatever. <laughs> but so, funny story. Uh, about a year and a half ago, it was my birthday. It was coming up, and I really like Kane Roberts as a guitar player. He played on a couple of those Alice Cooper albums in the '80s. Really buff dude. He had like a machine gun guitar. Yeah. It was pretty ridiculous, but yeah. I. I think he's fantastic and i like his writing and uh, my girlfriend like reached out to him via like instagram or his website to like try to get like a skype lesson and um so he was like yeah i can do it like can you give me like an idea of, like where he's at as a player so she sent him like a link to some arsa stuff and he wrote her back and he's just like oh wait a second they, they did a cover of roses on white lace like yeah alice and i liked it a lot and i was just like well that's cool like 
that Alice Cooper actually I was like on his radar like to yeah. some degree if anything um Coast so that's that that's gotta be pretty cool yes. yeah so Alice so I, Cooper giving you a shout out I know so that was that was one of the many like awesome things that I got for my birthday that year but I, that was probably like that was up there like I got an autographed King Diamond poster that was personalized it was pretty rad but I gotta say that email from Kane Roberts was like wow that's pretty rad that's really super cool so we love seeing Alice Cooper too yeah but look, on the 16th of October, I know we're going to be at outdoors <laughs> at Gas Monkey. Awesome, guys. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. So when you like cover a song on an album, like I hope I'm not like going to get you in trouble for asking this. But, like, oh, it's sort of like how, how does that work? Royalties and stuff. You like, know, like you that's to... not, you know, once I give it to the record. Like, Do we just oh, not I, talk about it? That... See, so, you know, I handle all the legal, right? <laughs> that, that's kind of on them. They, they, like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, like I, they've been made aware. So like I, um. You know, I, I think sometimes it's more of an issue than others, like depending on like what you're doing with it and what your tent is and like how, maybe how much, what your sales are like and yeah, that sort yeah. of stuff. I got to imagine that like, I don't know if, you know, Selena wanted to cover a Michael Jackson song, there'd probably be some <laughs> sort of, you know, just because yeah, of like sure. the size of, you know, how big an artist they are, yeah. um, that might be a different issue. So. I'm sure there's all sorts of yeah. problems that come along with being like that big of a, yeah. a celebrity. I just didn't artist. want to <laughs> put you on like Alice Cooper's lawyer's radar. Or something oh, like. <laughs> well, Alice Cooper already but, knows apparently. Yeah, you know? but basically um, what you're saying is you record it, you turn it into them, mm -hmm. and they handle all that. Yeah, yeah. Nuclear Blast good to work with? Yeah, dude. I, I've um, so we signed to Nuclear Blast in 2006, and um. We, so our first album came out in 2004 on another label called Willow Tip Records and uh, almost immediately uh, Nuclear Blast and a couple other labels like wanted to buy the rights to the record. Um, it didn't end, up, didn't end up happening, but I've been, so Gerardo, who's like the, the label manager at Nuclear Blast and I have been in pretty close contact with one another for, you know, 14 years now. So it's, it's I've known, known these people for like a very long time and it's really, it's the same group of people that basically were there when we signed you know 12 years ago so um wow. yeah no really really good dudes and the the label that's putting out in in europe and like the rest of the world uh agonia they seem like really solid people too actually right. yeah they really do um they seem like pumped and like anxious and like you know just so they get it out there and yeah you, so you got fans everywhere so yeah i mean i guess i'm so i'm told <laughs> I mean, if you believe the internet, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I'm sure you do that. Yeah. So. Uh, look, you've been playing for a long time. Sure. You've playing everywhere. Mm hmm Any, any moments stand out? And yeah. If not, please make one up. Okay. <laughs> um, stand out, like, uh, I don't know, what crazy incidences on, on tour or uh, on stage or with fans or. No, no, I mean, not, not really. Like, I mean, just, uh, I mean, cause I think, uh. Um, especially in, in, in metal, like, I mean, we're all kind of like, like nerdy dudes and I, I, nothing like, it's not, it's not 1983 and none of us are Motley Crue. So I can't, I don't think it's like ever going to be, you know, yeah. there's no, I don't know. No, right. no, not nothing like, like super wild. Um, one time he went on a podcast with this guy named Satan. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is probably like the most exciting thing I've done in like quite a while. So yeah, like I'm, <laughs> I'm very much a homebody. I just kind of like, you know, do my thing. And yeah. here's what I like about Arsis. Yeah. That you have a dark sense of humor. For sure. Yeah. You do. And, and you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you gotta look for it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But, but then once you realize it's there, yeah. it's like, well, yeah. I mean, I feel like you have to have a sense of humor with, like, with anything in life. Like, even, um, man, I, I, yeah, I, I just, I appreciate the, the humor and the dark humor. And, like, so, like, my favorite horror movies are, like, uh, like, Vamp or, uh, cool. um, yeah. Night of the Comet, like, that sort of stuff. Like, the, I, I do tend to lean towards, lean towards, like, the 80s, like, horror comedies. And then I really like Italian horror as well, like, uh, like Fulci or Argento and that sort of stuff. Um, if it gets too real, though, like for instance, uh, we went and saw Hereditary, yes, and not that it's there's anything like real about that, but like the movie kind of fucked me up to be honest yeah. with you. Like, we, I really we, like. We just we went and saw that last Sunday at the Dollar Theater. Yeah, it just kind of made me feel very, uh, very yeah. weird for like a day and a half or so. And I'm not gonna say that I entirely hated it, but at the same time, it's not like. 
you know, hey, yeah. you just got done eating dinner. Like, do you, what do you want to throw on right before bed? Like, do you want to throw on like, you know, Vamp or Heather's, or do you want to put on Hereditary? <laughs> I'd probably be like, great. Probably yeah. be like Heather's. Heather's is so <laughs> good. No, Man, uh, I loved Hereditary. Hereditary was a heavy movie. It had yeah. a lot of really heavy topics yeah, and absolutely. things that you don't want to think about or see ever. Yeah. So yeah, I can totally see where you come from, especially like the ending. I was like, what the. Oh, I know. Absolutely. I was like, what is even you happening right now? You can't unsee a lot no, of that. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. But I think that it needed a few more like comedic elements. There was nothing really funny about the movie. A lot of horror needs a little bit of a release. So some yeah, of those absolutely. scenes felt really, metal does. Yeah, over, a bit. Yeah. really over the top. There were some scenes that I, because you didn't have another part to release like your, you know, like the tension, yeah. that you found them more funny than they should have been. Like, yeah. there were some scenes that I was laughing at that I should not have been laughing at. Right. I'm like, am I fucked up? And I'm like, oh, there was nowhere for you to release all that tension. So this mm. is coming out in the wrong part. So and it's movie. a long movie. So yeah. it's it's a lot of tension. It doesn't feel that long, though. Like, it's, I feel like the, it's a, it's a modern, modern day slow burn, like, which mm. you don't really have a lot of. Um, right. Like, like John Carpenter's The Fog is like, like I was just watching that last night. Man, yeah. dude, that, I love that movie. The yeah. slow burn of that, that movie, movie is yeah. so great. Yeah. But like, like you were saying, like, I don't think horror needs the, the release of the tension. Like, like in Get Out, you had the TSA guy as like the comedic relief. And like, I, I feel like it, it was well done in that film, but I, I don't think we need a lot of that in horror. Like, I, I feel like too much of that would just. No, just kill, I mean, you it. just need maybe like one or two things where you can take a breath. Right. Maybe not even that. Just take a breath. You know, kind of nah, like. I don't like to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So well, my we're getting a picture. Of what his movie is no, going to be like? <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that I think everything needs a balance and it create a balance. Yeah, I think there the was a scene yang. where yeah, I was yeah. dying laughing at something I should not have been laughing at. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. This is my same. point. I think I know what scene you're talking about. It was and... so over the top because yeah. everything else, it just there wasn't balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, it may uh, not even been comedic. It just needed something in there. Our engineer Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. Hello. Uh, the story that I like to tell on that is the first time that I saw Green Room, after that final line hit, I gut laughed out loud for a solid 20 minutes nonstop. That is such a fucking great movie, yeah. though. I love Green Never Room. Never saw Green Room. Green yeah, me Room either. so good. I've heard a lot of good things. But... It's about a punk band on tour. You would like it. Well, if you want like crazy no, like it's... tour stories, like the crazy things that I have to say about touring is like going into these clubs that are kind of messed up, man. Where you're like, man, am I gonna make it out of here? Like, this, this place is sketchy. About. Is like we put this place in Armadillo, Texas, called the Nat Theater. Now, I guess in its heyday, like Tina Turner used to play there and stuff like that. It was like this really big old building. But so we walk in and we're playing there in December. And there's still plates of like nachos on the table from like a Halloween party that they had and like streamers <laughs> up and stuff. There's like holes in the floor. We start walking around because we're like there like way early and stuff. And we found like all these weird um, like suicide bomber like uh, like costumes. But it like looked almost like a little too real where you're just like, what is happening? Oh there was like empty handles of Everclear. And then we find this room that's like the human feces room like somebody had been using this room oh, as like right. a bathroom it was like upstairs and like the the wings of this place and it was just so bizarre and i remember like finding this and being like okay we gotta walk downstairs and like so um the i guess this establishment like butted up against like a bookstore or something like that and there was like this glass door and you could see this lady like in there sweeping and I couldn't tell if she could see me or not. I'm like, is this real? Like, is, is she a ghost? Like, oh, what's even happening? Right, it was just, right, like, right. so weird. It was so bizarre. But, like, yeah, like, stuff like that. Like, I, you know, I could probably tell you, like, yeah. You found out later she was a ghost. No, actually, <laughs> I, I realized that, oh, well, that's a bookstore. And she's, like, you know, tidying up. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but for that moment, and I was probably pretty hungover, but I was like, what's happening? Is Man. she, that she had to be dead? Like, yeah. Armadillo? That, that's kind of, that's uh, what Amarillo. That's, Amarillo. That's what the green room's about, though. They end up in this like bar where they're playing with a bunch of like Nazis, right? Yeah. They try to you know and end up being stuck in the green room. And it's like, are they gonna make it out or are they not? And the tension is so high in that movie, but there it, it's it's very well balanced. Yeah, it's, it's hard to watch at times, but it's just really well done. It's that's so, so well made. They're deliberately antagonistic. So the band goes on stage and they said, we're going to play Nazi punks, fuck off. Yeah. To all these white supremacist audience. Yeah. And so chaos ensues. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, I, I definitely, I'll check it out. Sure. Yeah. And now, is that Eli Roth? 
Yeah. It is? Okay. No. What's so, no. No, no, it's Jared Inferno. Solnier. Green I'm Inferno. sorry. Green Inferno Politics. was Eli Roth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Green Room is not directed by Eli Roth. Okay, so Green Inferno, Green Inferno not, not Green Room, is yeah. Eli Roth. Don't okay. watch Green Inferno. Green Inferno was like a, I, like I, a I, cannibal holocaust, <laughs> like, tribute. Or, it was like yeah, his I saw that in the theater. cannibal theaters, holocaust because yeah. he, yeah. he loves Ruggiero Diotato. Yeah. I, I couldn't couldn't do Hannibal, Cannibal Holocaust. I couldn't. Oh, Man, yeah. I love that movie. A lot of people, so obsessed with that movie. A lot of people can't do it. I it's, took me, like, uh, too real. That's one of my, like, that's... It took me two or three tries to finally watch it. But when I did get through it, I I did like it. I but it's a fucked it. up movie. It's not one of those movies that you're like, hey, what should we put on during dinner? No, oh, no. Cannibal Holocaust. It's not really a movie you ever think you want to watch again either. Yeah. Fun fact. The director has made lots of other movies. I know. I know. <laughs> some of them are just like Some uh, of them are romances. Dramas. Some yeah, are cop yeah. dramas. Yeah. Like he's made wow. his, his like uh, filmography is massive and it's very, very. Well, actually, the. Um, variant. So there, it was Italian, right? Yes. So like, um, so Fulci, like the 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 people that wrote uh, the couple that wrote the screenplays for like, Zombie and uh, you know like the Beyond and whatnot. Apparently they they did like Erotica before that. Oh, all right. Yeah, it was like a husband and wife team, at the, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, so like Zombie was actually the first like horror thing they ever did. Like prior to that, they were just doing like, uh, like I said, like Erotica type stuff. This is kind of like yeah, like. Well, an interesting jump there. But yeah, I guess yeah. I guess your career can take I mean, there's different a, paths. <laughs> so. Maybe there's yeah. some way of justifying their similarities, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, look, yes, sir. erotica first. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. And then no. we no. leap you to horror. No. Well, I, you know, or you could do like the Ed Wood path, where Ed Wood, you know, you're not going to make bad movies, but Ed Wood made terrible movies <laughs> and made no money and then was like, oh, I'm going to make erotica. Let, let's yeah. ask your producer. But I'm sure your movie is going to be amazing, no. and you do not need to do erotica. No, definitely Unless no erotica. Unless you feel like you want to do it, then that's cool. No, I don't feel like okay. I need to do that. His uh, girlfriend's in the corner going, no. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, no, I'll, I'll just stick with Colts and... All right, good. I think you're, I you're, on, you're, on the, the you're on the right path. You're doing good. It's going to be awesome. It. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we prefer the left-hand well, path here. Oh, here, yes. So. Yeah. Entombed. Of nice. course. <laughs> Entombed. You know, I, I actually, reference. I really actually enjoy. Uh, are you a fan of the helicopters? Oh, I am big yeah, yeah. time. We're just yeah. playing in the car. All right, yeah, I, lo I love the helicopters as well. Oh. It's, it's the it's, what's this? Is it Nick? Wait, I forget his his name, but um, it's the drummer from the first two. Well, he was on a few Entombed records, but it's his like garage rock like what? kind of project. He like sings and plays guitar, really? and it's like really cool. It's I, I, so I dig fun. It. Yeah, it's really it's, good. It's, it's it's less serious than Entombed. The oh yeah, but yeah really aggressive it's that death and roll from sweden that yeah. you love yeah it's it's really fun um but, i mean i think there was even a, like an evolution like within the helicopters because you did it for quite a while i think they became I, like somewhat popular and like at the end it was like almost like kiss i mean i really dug it it's like right it's on. really cool stuff yeah I'll but he's doing um doesn't he have like another death metal band now called like death breath or something like that um pretty yeah, sure one of them joined uh this uh like doom metal band Okay. Uh, called um, uh, like it's like Satan or I don't know some sort of uh, just um, evil witch or I don't know, something like that. Okay. I'm forgetting the name, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, prolific and they've been doing that since the early '90s. Oh yeah, yeah, you or know, late so '80s. I, I mean, yeah, yeah the yeah. helicopters, the helicopters. Yeah, very good. Um, all right, so we've been talking a lot about tricking the gods. Sure. Yeah. And this is an awesome video. You got to see it, Logan. I will. Jenny no, Slash, I, I, I think we watched it a few times, but but you've got to just really... It, do you use Haxon, some of the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, um, so the director, Rob, he... Um, and I, so when you're in an underground death metal band, it's not like you have like the biggest video budget. So I um, found uh, a director that I knew that um, actually my girlfriend and I had worked on, with on a short film last year. And um, I reached out to him. I was just like, hey, dude, like... Here's our budget. Like, I kind of would like to do two videos. So there is going to be a second video coming. Yeah. I was just like, what can we do? So he he wrote the treatment. It's um, he and um, this guy named Adam. And uh, so, um, but to like kind of like break up the uh, the narrative footage and the, the band footage, he did use um, some footage from uh, a movie called Haxen, which is like a 1920s Swedish movie. Um, kind of like, ages. yes, I love it. Very and, funny. Um, but it, so it's it's all in public domain now, all the footage yeah, is. So you course. can like, um, I think there's like a Criterion 
transfer of it that probably it's a really good transfer but really you probably transfer. don't want to try to use that we, so yeah. we didn't use that because like well, i'm sure criterion uh, might have a problem with that but rob, rob zombie used to use it as a, in like the background when he would play he would use Haxon. Haxon, yeah no the yeah. stuff looks creepy as shit like yeah. and um so i'd like i kind of like in um I'm, I'm sure yeah we all grew up watching mtv so at some point we probably saw like uh videos for number of the beast or like run to the hills where they would use like the kind of public domain footage to like break up the band footage because it's very clear if you watch like the videos that they shot for like number of the beast or like power slave it's very clear that like hey dudes we're in the same setting we're trying to make like three videos in one day <laughs> so like yeah, and like yeah. we were kind oh. of like in a similar well, boat like with this so like i thought it, was, it wasn't my idea at all to use that the, the hacks and stuff but when rob sent it to me and i was just like oh that's actually like pretty clever like i would probably would have done the same thing if i had thought of it so um so yeah it, it's in there i think it it fits the mood pretty well um and i think it does add a it, it definitely beefs up the occult aspect of it but it, yeah. it's also like there's certain scenes of it that i think are like kind of like tongue-in-cheek as well so yeah it's cool now yeah. are you saying there's a second video in the can yeah that'll be coming out in uh I don't know what the release date, release date on that is right. exactly, but it, there is one coming. Yeah. The album is Visitant. Yes. And the band is Arsis. Yes. The release date is November 2nd. Yes. But two weeks prior to that, you could probably hear some of those songs at the live show in Dallas. Absolutely. October 16th. That. Yes. And there it is right there. Bloodletting North America 12 with Decrepit Birth and so many other good bands. Fucking internal bleeding. I know. They were like one of the first death metal shows I went to was like internal bleeding, like immolation and six feet under, maybe. Man. I want to say. This must have been like New York or somewhere. Line. It was in Virginia, actually, yeah. uh, like 1999 or so. Um, but uh, Almost 20 years ago. Yeah, man. I was I was a kid. <laughs> that's for sure. I was three. You were three? <laughs> wow. I was 19. <laughs> what year cool. was that? 1999. 1999. I was 13. <laughs> yeah, I was 19. I was probably drinking Colt 45. In the parking lot, <laughs> not the venue. <laughs> Maybe I remember doing that. So. But what, remember, when you were 18, you wrote, wrote a lot of the material for a celebration. I did. Of Gil. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all right then in your life. Absolutely. Eternal bleeding, dude. God, they are a powerful it. live band. I saw them on that tour with Vader. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Incredible. I saw I saw Vader back then too. I saw Vader in Halloween night in 2000. I want to say they actually. Uh, had to cut their set short um but it was actually that was a bloodletting tour too that was maybe oh if this if this is bloodletting 12 then that would have technically been a bloodletting tour but it was um um that was with like deeds of flesh and flesh. Uh, origin no, no it would, it would have been year. it was deeds of flesh it was uh oh this is 2000 so it was deeds of flesh it was dying fetus with like the original lineup or whatever and um vader headlining and nice. cephalic carnage maybe oh yeah and they played dressed as slipknot since it was halloween that was pretty funny actually. <laughs> was, pretty, pretty what, was there a period in death metal for a while that you know it was just so underground oh yeah i think for, so yeah, yeah. Where, you, you were it was even off my radar for like the longest time and, and to where if you want to see a gig it'd be in like a warehouse or, or something it'd be oh a, it'd be a house party or something <laughs> like. that, that may have been before my time even but um I mean, uh, because I didn't really start listening to death metal probably till I was about 18, 18 years old or so. So 18, 19. So it was, like I said, it was off my radar for for a long, long time. So, so you made the leap from Pet Shop Boys to... I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, actually, I think I think the leap actually was like... Uh, I, w I was into like metal. Like, so for my fifth birthday, I got like Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry. And then I got into like Molly Crew. And it was like downhill from there. And then by the time I was like 18, 19, <laughs> I was like into like, you know, like more extreme metal and the, the metal that was coming from, from Europe and whatnot. And then right around the time that we signed our first record contract around 2003 or so, like we were playing like a lot of shows. We were playing like not touring at that point, but like playing at least every weekend. And I can remember being at my parks and recreation job in Virginia, like still in college and like Duran Duran came on like the intercom at work. And I was just like, you know what? This sounds so good right now after like brutal, like, <laughs> blast beats all weekend yeah. and like from then on it was just kind of like yeah. i don't know i don't want to say that we have like a no distortion in the van rule but i mean i know if i'm driving it's probably <laughs> it's probably some music no, nobody else wants to hear i like love abba you know just like what a michael you know, jackson tom like, Araya says the same thing yeah on tour he listens to mellow stuff yeah 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 it's just kind of 
Sometimes you got to break it up. Yeah. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it helps the brain, I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you get absolutely. new ideas. Well, and, and, well, and, it and, creates and I, balance. Absolutely. And I teach music at this point. So, like, uh, even... Um, and I, I teach a lot of stuff that's, like, outside of my wheelhouse. So, um, you know, I'll have to work on, like, a James Jamerson bass line with somebody. And just the... Uh, the musicality that went into like a lot of like that Motown stuff. It's just like, it's off the charts. You, I mean, you gotta they, admire it. You're right. Oh yeah. yeah. You're right. Like they, those dudes were like called in for like a session and they're just like improvising and like making the shit happen on the fly, like better than like most of us playing music. So it's, it's pretty phenomenal to think about like what was actually happening in like different, different genres. Like I said, like, like completely outside my wheelhouse, but it's, um, and it's, it's, uh, now, I grew up as, like, a pretty versatile musician, but, you know, obviously, like, uh, so Ars is signed when I was, like, pretty young. So for most of my adult life, I haven't had to, like, play anybody else's material besides my own. So, like, when, when I finally, like, started, like, really teaching a lot, you know, about three years ago, it, like, really opened my eyes um, to a lot of different music. And uh, cool. I think Visitant, I think it shows in the writing on the new record, actually, Neat. quite a bit. So. Uh, sidebar question. Sure. Do you get calls... From I don't know, George Corpse Grinder or someone, uh, you know, like, hey, we need an extra guitarist, uh, and no. you're really good, so can you? Uh, no, like I, I don't so much get like those type of calls. Like I'll get calls to do like a guest solo here and there, um, or like if somebody maybe. Uh, so I started a, a project. Well, I joined a project. I, I should say with um, about four years ago, we uh, did a record called Necromancing the Stone. So it was like myself. There's a couple guys from this doom band called. Um, Brimstone Coven, and it was the drummer from The Absence, who's now the drummer in Venom Incorporated. So, um, and we did like uh, kind of like a uh, throwback, um, I'd say like retro metal type of sound record, but um, I, it's got a lot of different elements to it. It's actually really, it was a cool record. So I'll get like, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I know I'm, I'm not the most uh, probably the type of guitar player you want to like hire for like a session necessarily but um if it comes to like uh um developing ideas and stuff like that that's kind of like my i was a composition major in college so like um i feel like uh developing ideas i'm like probably a little bit better at that than i would be like hey dude i need you to like learn our set in like two days to do this tour i'm <laughs> probably not the guy you want to call all right <laughs> so and when you do a guest uh, solo is it is it something you can do in your studio and then you send it to him digitally and at this point, yes. Like, um, for long, I fought like the home recording thing like really hard for like the longest time. So, like the first, I was really into home recording when I was in high school. So we're talking the '90s. So, uh, and that translates to a four track. Like, if you know what that is, like there, that's Logan, what the Logan does. That's what, <laughs> that's what like the Beatles like recorded like their first couple albums. Like, okay. it's a it's a cassette tape, and like what happens okay. is, um, you can actually record like so the the home studio allows you to essentially play both sides of the tape at once so you can record four tracks so essentially you can like split the tape twice per side right um so that that gives you a total of like four tracks to work with so like celebration of guilt diamond for disease um everything up until we are the nightmare was all demoed out on like a four track uh cassette yeah. like home studio so wow. and uh, that's it's really uh a very difficult way to record because like yes you can punch in but there's no editing it's not like now like where if i record something now i you know i can look at the waveform and be like oh i rushed that beat a little bit let's scoot that back like there's none of that so like to to play it and to, to record it so that it's coherent enough for other people to like understand what's going on like you have to like be pretty good at like what you're playing so like i feel like it made me a better player in that sense but at the same time like once home recording took off and got affordable for people to like really start doing like I fought it I was just like oh I'm not gonna I'm not gonna learn how to do that and I was just like I was lazy and like um so that about two years ago um I had some time off from work and from touring and I was like you know what I think I'm gonna like learn what this stuff's actually about so um yeah so I, and now I'm like addicted to it and like really into it no kidding but yeah cool. yeah absolutely cool. so, yeah you have some big ass speakers at your house uh, yeah, I do actually. But, um, so I, I'm just and, curious, man. Oddly, and also, what's your address? I'm uh, kidding. Oddly enough, I uh, so I, I mean, I when I'm uh, working on stuff, I just yeah, I mix through like some 
they're not the worst like Imadia speakers, but I did purchase um, some like vintage Morant speakers over the summer. I've got to get some work done to them, but I think they're going to be like pretty pretty awesome once I uh, get them up and running. Can you put some volume on them and not upset your neighbors? Or you know what? Like, I, I, so neighbors. I live in an apartment, but I was convinced for like the past two and a half years that we didn't have neighbors at all because I've never saw I never saw anybody I actually recorded the vocals for the new record in my closet I never had one complaint um but um yeah somebody moved in so Dang. <laughs> I know so I, I guess it's a good thing we finished the record but yeah I absolutely know I have neighbors now because I've seen them and I can hear them um so it's real I don't live in this apartment building by myself Man. so yeah. would that be amazing if you did though I was convinced I did for a very long time just because I never saw anybody so and it's a huge life. building. Must be nice. Yeah. The so. video. I know we got to get back to the video. Oh, sorry. sorry. Well, are we going to show the video, or are we just going to talk? No, about we're just going to talk about it. I think we should show it and then talk this about it. It's a badass video. We're going to show oh, the you. video. Thank you. It, yeah. Is it Let's one of it. the first the band has made? No, we, we've done. Um, this is like the. Fifth video, maybe okay. fourth, okay. fifth. Yeah, all right. yeah. All right, cool. Can we show the video? Yes. I want to see the video. Jenny Slash always, yeah, always, always keeps us going. Yes. Somebody's so, got to like with him. Yeah. So we're ready. He we're gonna do track. it. And this is uh, tricking the gods, right? <laughs> yes. From Visit Ten Arsis.
We dare you to sit still if you're listening to Arsis because I can't. I just cannot be still when you guys are playing at on the stereo, in the car, anywhere, man. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate oh. that. Woo. Powerful. All right. So I'm sorry you die in the end of that. Oh, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> but it's so good. Like, in the so. second one, do they revive you? Is that how you ended up here? No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Thought maybe there was a séance or something. No, you know, that would be like, that'd be clever necromancy. though. Logan, did you like the drumming? I did. That was. That was really I mean, I like. I mean, not just the drum, like everything. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you guys. Appreciate a a reminder again: he's a drummer. I know. You told me. I don't know. I like how he's why are you like, plugging <laughs> that. <laughs> he's a filmmaker. Filmmaker. We're focusing oh. on his films. I played like I played in some local bands, but I that's that's about it. So well, that's so impressive. That's more than a lot of people. Absolutely. No, yeah, yeah, you should be proud of whatever I, I music absolutely. output. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I am proud. I am proud. But right. I don't. <laughs> he keeps plugging it. And He's I'm not a filmmaker. looking for a hookup. <laughs> uh, look, the thing is, I've seen Spinal Tap, okay. so I know that sometimes you need a drummer. Okay, and I'm just throwing that out. But he, but we're talking about his filmmaking, his new film that he's making. Right. All right. So you're absolutely right. So <laughs> let's talk about Benedictus. What were your influences? Oh, my influences. Uh, lately I've been crediting uh, The Witch as like one of my biggest influences. Um, Is that I, worth checking out? A lot of people talk. Another oh, slow man. burn. I love that movie so much. It's probably my favorite film to come out in the last five years. Wow. Okay. Um, so it is you're fantastic. a fan of slow burns. I you, you I guess I am. Yeah. Did you like Mother? Hereditary. I've heard Mother I was like. Seen Mother. I haven't seen Mother. I've seen heard it's a slow burn as well. Yeah. I I like Jennifer Lawrence, so <laughs> maybe that's a good reason to see it. I don't know. Why is that name familiar to me? Uh, Hunger Games. Oh. That well, girl. I mean, I never saw that. So. Uh, she's a she's always like in the tabloids. Oh, so really? if you go to a grocery know. store, she's probably on the I go to the grocery store every weekend. <laughs> and you probably see her on the cover of a magazine. That's you probably mean, why you're like, oh, Jennifer uh, Lawrence is, oh. I um, actually still shop for my groceries. You don't even, <laughs> so, like, realize. I, I wish I had money it's to shop for those, my groceries. It's just one of those, subliminal things. You don't even realize that you're seeing it. So it's probably why it sounds kind of familiar. Well, what? yesterday I was in the grocery store, and there's this tabloid that was just like, or it's like one of those, I don't know, I guess it was like, a, it was a tabloid, but it was, they were kind of like marketing some, like, new like weight loss either like program or whatnot but it was just like works just like gastric bypass will make you feel 82 percent better i was oh, like that's man. so specific that margin that's such a spe specific number like 82 yeah. percent better like how did they figure that out because yeah. if they said 80 percent, you wouldn't believe it. you're like 82 but there 90 they knew they were highballing I research know. behind the two because yeah. if not yeah because when you put it in like it, i'm surprised it wasn't like 82.1 percent be, better yeah that is better. Yeah. So, I, I don't know, f funny thing, the imagery here, almost, mm -hmm. this is from his movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and I, almost looks a little like Tricking the Gods. But I did, did you uh, see... I uh, did all the graphics for it. We we actually, that, that was a DIY photo shoot that we did um, just at a park right by my house. Oh, that's um, awesome. They yeah. let you, like... Set fire oh, we there. didn't ask. Oh no, oh, you don't ask. <laughs> we just don't ask. <laughs> we we had like permission from the fire did. department. Oh <laughs> no, no, we didn't ask. We uh, it was just like so. I was like four buddies. I called them up like the day of the photo shoot and was like, "What are you guys doing today?" They said nothing. So we went. And we got all the materials that day. Uh, shout out to Party City for the tiki torches. Um, and we spray painted them. And so we just went out to this field and we were like, "All right, we probably got about like." maybe 30 minutes until people start raising some eyebrows yeah, so yeah. we uh we hustled it and uh we got some pretty gnarly shots i would say yeah have you ever heard of the director tim ritter he's like a uh, 1980s director he directed uh some really really interesting movies one of my favorites i can't think of what it's killing called spree? killing spree killing spree okay so it's like a uh, horror comedy but we did an interview with him like a year and a half ago and he went over all these crazy techniques they used to make super low budget films like buying things from party city and yeah. how they made scenes look like they were police officers it's actually almost like a filmmaking 101 for yeah. low budget yeah. filmmakers not that his movies are any good they're so <laughs> terrible that they're That's great reassuring. no they're, they're great. great but what i'm saying is there's they're lots great. of really awesome techniques how you know when you're making a low budget film you have to be creative oh absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah. and that's it's incredible because you have to really think outside of the box like this this light could it looks like a light but we're gonna make it all these things you know mm -hmm. it's gonna be a police siren yeah. it's gonna be you know the spooky light off in the distance for some sci-fi thing yeah it's just yeah. amazing well and th that's and one thing I'd... i love him by the way i'm not insulting him at all he's, <laughs> he's amazing his movies are so good 
And that's one of the things I think that I appreciate about like horror of like you know the seventies and eighties in particular is just because um, trying to make something of nothing and not having like CGI at your disposal, and um, I think it kind of uh, almost creates like um, kind of like a, an otherworldly like type of effect. Like you, um, I don't know, you definitely feel like you're somewhere else as opposed to like. I don't want the, I don't want it to yeah. look too real. I really I don't like you know like for one it's gonna gross me out. I'm get, gonna get sque <laughs> squeamish. I want it to look like kind of like like for instance in our video like we're not trying to hide the fact that it's a dude in a you werewolf suit like you know what I mean like I don't like, yeah. werewolves aren't real like, like so yeah. like it's just like I don't want to hide. Are that you fact. serious? I mean they're not. I, I that's I my mean. Santa Claus, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe too. I really do. <laughs> that's my Santa Claus. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like speaking on the low budget uh, and back to the influence question, um, my favorite film of all time is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and just what Toby Hooper did with that movie on his just shoestring budget, the, all the implied gore and how like like there was really you didn't see any of the violence, but your mind just kind of created it and filled in those gaps. Uh, I, I really am, am inspired by that. And it had such a reputation as being yeah. like this graphic, like insanely yeah. messed up movie i can remember being in like a video store with my parents in like the 80s and like seeing like a censored like cover for it be like what is yeah. this like it's probably gonna be like the most fucked up thing ever right? and it's like i think that also is credited to like the remakes um like where people associate this movie with being just like super, super graphic gory. is because of the remakes they absolutely were uh, at least those those michael bay produced movies yeah. they were extremely bloody um but like people are always like persistent on saying like i saw him put her on that meat hook and it's like well you saw him lift her up you didn't really see the meat hook go into her body and it's like it, it was just just what he did was just so fantastic yeah. what do you think of texas chainsaw massacre the next generation uh i i don't like it <laughs> i ref i i own all of the movies oh, except for that one and that movie i saw it one time and never again all right I all just, right all right yeah, no, I, I, yeah, like I'm, I'm not a fan. Uh, yeah, Renee Zellweger, I, yeah, not. A fan. It was I, I super like, weird. I like Bridget Jones' Diary, man. I really do. That's, that's, I like that movie. I saw. I think I saw she both of me, this myself, and Irene. We are learning so much today <laughs> about our rock star in the room. It's a good movie. It's good. It's good. I like it. She was in B movie. I guess if anybody, any millennials are watching, she was in B movie. <laughs> All right, so do, let's see. Have we shown the Facebook page for Benedictus? And I don't know if I sent Ziggy. Of uh, I don't know if we had a video of your your commentary or anything. But yeah, Facebook page. So go to this page, right? Yes, Logan. It's, uh, and it's Facebook, and you can just search uh, Benedictus or Benedictus Film, uh, Facebook and Instagram, both. So. Yeah. And like you said, you've got a cast. You've got you. this ready for shooting on September 21st. Yes, sir. So stay in touch with us, man. On, yeah, um, on, on you're gonna make a dark horror. Yeah, it's uh, that's our that's our big cartel shop right there. there we um, go. That's where we're trying to push some shirts. Uh, we're gonna put some posters up there too. Um, yeah. So that's what we got. It's it's going along, man. It's been a we I, we've been working on it all summer. We started the Indiegogo campaign in June. Um, and, and we just pushed that for however many months, three months or whatever. Uh, and it, it has been a crazy process. I don't know if, if anybody would have told me what I was trying to do, like back when I was trying to do it. And if they told me everything that I had to deal with, I probably would have been like, oh, okay, this can wait. But I just, <laughs> now been, you're already in doing yeah, it. Yeah. I can't. Stop Welcome that. to my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's like metal. It's yeah. like touring on a metal tour. It's it's one of the hardest things ever. It, it's yeah. amazing though because you'll have all this this pile of things that you know you need to do and you feel a little overwhelmed, but you know you just make a list, you work through it, and you're like, oh, and, and you somehow look back it on it, done. and you're like, how the fuck did I do all that? But <laughs> yeah. it got fucking done. Absolutely. That yeah. I've had many a moment where I just look at my list of like things I need to do, things I need, people I need to talk to, and there's X's by everything, and I'm like, I. Did I do that, or did somebody possess my body and yeah. do that for me? Because yeah. it's been a long, long process and uh, really stressful, but I'm, I'm extremely grateful for everything and, and just being able to make it. So. This is cool. Yeah, definitely stay in touch with it. Are you shooting, like, up uh, in Dallas or up in... Uh, yeah, we got a location uh, on Lake Louisville. 
cool. So, um, yeah, we got that. Uh, and then we've got some minor locations, like secondary locations in Denton. Um, okay. Because that's old that's Alton Bridge. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the, the, the Goat Man. Yeah. 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 No, that's uh, that is a crazy story. I don't know the story. I, so. It's, it's. I've heard many, many renditions of it, and it's just been passed down and passed well, down. Uh, the little bit I have heard, it reminded me of like almost like a Candyman type story. From like, yeah. Yeah. What, um, yeah. Which urban legend are we talking about? Uh, the Goat, Goat Man's Bridge. Oh, Goat Man's in, in Denton. Yeah. 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 Is it weird? Do, like, have investigations you guys? There. No, I've never actually I've been there. I had a buddy he visited there not too long ago and said it. There, like even now, like still, it's pretty. Pretty weird. Pretty Just dicey. a weird vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Weird vibe, and I guess like. Uh, you guys want to all go out there? Yeah. Let's like do let's it. all go out there one day. Yeah, let's plan a trip. Yeah. Ziggy show. told us we'll uh, we can do remote. So. <laughs> He's joking, Ziggy. He's joking. <laughs> <laughs> what we we'll do? We'll just have you edit the video. Well, no, we have all these editors. You guys will do it for us, right? <laughs> we know We're a filmmaker joking, right here. Ziggy. I'm sorry. And so we'll that. work it out somehow. We're, uh, yeah, Goat Man's I, Bridge. You like, I have time to go to the Goat Man's Bridge, seriously, Ziggy. You should see him right now. He's like, I'm trying to see this. <laughs> She's a performer, too, and this is kind of her busy period, and that is uh, moving into Halloween period. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm a sideshow burlesque performer. Speaking of that, sideshow. What is that yeah. like? What does that entail? Um, I play with snakes and stuff. No, or? I don't play with snakes. I have a girl that plays with snakes. I don't snakes. I have She has a girl that plays with snakes. snakes I have a friend. I have a performer <laughs> in my troupe that performs with snakes. Yes. Yeah. I call I. She's my girl. <laughs> we have women for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like, always like I have a performer for that. No, I I um, hammer nails up my nose and stick drill bits up my nose oh. and uh, so that side show. Lay okay. on bed of nails and walk up machetes ladder, ladders and. She got decapitated in Ohio. I got decapitated in Ohio a few hundred times. Sat in hundred electric times. chair a few hundred times. I'm just kidding. Actually, it was. We're in Ohio. <laughs> I was performing with a sideshow troupe called World of Wonders, and they travel uh, the U.S., and they perform at county fairs. I was in Sandusky, Ohio, in Zanesville, oh, wow. Ohio, which is a very s interesting town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't venture out in Zanesville. I kind of just stayed in the tent. Something crazy mm -hmm. happened in Ohio? Oh, no. I mean, Ohio is just an interesting place. It you is. know, I visited it's four weird. different cities there, and they are all drastically different. Oh, for different. sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. even in Texas, you go and you know, similarity. No, Sandusky, Columbus, Cleveland, and Zanesville is where I went. I performed mm -hmm. in Sandusky and Zanesville. Everybody it's just completely different. All oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's interesting for sure. It, it was definitely a culture shock every time we moved. I was like, oh. And I'm, I'm from Texas. And so you would think, you know being introduced as being from texas going out there like people with such thick accents i can barely understand what they're saying it's shocking to me because i'm from texas where you think we'd have the thick country accents <laughs> i feel like that's faded so, out a lot is the accent thing uh, but a lot of people still expect you to have it you know so, and you don't expect to be up more northern and people like actually have a thick kind of almost like texas accent that they would expect me to have well i think i think there's um yeah, obviously, I think, you know, people think of, like, you know, the South and, and whatnot as being, like, I guess, rural or remote and yeah. people, like, maybe. But from my experience, I mean, you Ohio, you know, like, yeah. Il Illinois outside of Chicago is, like, pretty rural. Yeah. Like, I mean, you yeah. can yeah. you can kind of have those types anywhere. Almost so. backwoods. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, it's definitely <laughs> interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, and that was only in, like, Zanesville. Sandusky was cool. Cleveland was cool. Did you see any Amish people? Yes. Okay. In Zanesville. Did you see, did you go to like a Walmart where they had like the horse and buggy like hookups and? <laughs> no, I didn't see any okay. at the Walmart. I only actually technically got to go to Walmart twice though while I was there. Yeah. It was really well, exciting. Well, well, guess what? Speaking of her. We didn't have like a. Amish we had make to, great donuts though. <laughs> do they? Oh, absolutely. How many donuts? Yeah. Like uh, there's this flea market in Ohio that um, has like the, these Amish like little like bakeries inside of it. And uh, they have like really amazing donuts. Like probably see, best donut I ever had in my life. I love donuts. And I don't eat sugar anymore. I haven't had. I mean, it's been a while since I had this donut, but I still think about it. So. <laughs> that's like that's like Marfa. <laughs> no, no, that's like that's like that's the funny. Marfa burritos in Marfa. Like I haven't been to Marfa in two years, but I'm like so excited about getting breakfast burritos. Texas, West, West, West Texas. Texas. West. All right, so all right, answer me this: We're in Dallas, right? Yeah. So if you tell me, no, it's like, not well, east. I know. It's not east I just I, I had this conversation <laughs> with one of my students. She's in, she's in high school, and um, she was talking about going to visit her family in East Texas, and I was like. But aren't we in East Texas? And she was like, no. And I was just like, 
whoa, I'm going to pull this up on a map, and we're going to settle this <laughs> out. And if you look at Dallas on a map, it is clearly in the eastern part of the state. I guess it is northeastern or whatnot, but, like, yeah. so you guys just do not consider Dallas to be... No. It's oh. North Texas. Oh, we're always referred to as North Texas. Yeah. The so, North Texas Metroplex. Yeah. It's, That's what we are. It's, it's just, it's really confusing <clears throat> because, like, you know, I've been traveling most of my adult life, and I've driven across Texas countless times, like... To me, like, you know, El Paso is clearly West Texas. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dallas is pretty much as far east as you're going to go before well, you start getting into, like, Louisiana. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, you're Louisiana's right. pretty close. I know, you're absolutely. Right. So like how are we not east of Texas? You're in there. And the same thing with Arkansas. You know, yeah. Arkansas knows. Yeah. Absolutely. Arkansas is very close. Like, and, oh, hey, we don't make the rules. We just know, say the I words. Know. <laughs> you know, it is super, <laughs> it is super strange. But though. Fort Worth is where the east ends and the ass kicking begins, right? <laughs> ah. <laughs> If yeah. you're wearing your boots, yeah. FT dubs. Yeah. <laughs> Fort, so Fort look, Worth does feel like the West, though, for sure it does. Yeah. Speaking of Fort Worth, Fort Worth is Fort Worth is an interesting town. I sure. like Fort Worth. Though. I love the yeah. stockyards. Yeah. It's fun it's to go fun. out there. And speaking it's of sideshow, we have a flyer to show you of an event Janie Slash is doing next month. Okay. Oh, yeah. At a rail club, we were talking I'm, about oh, a rail, rail club. club. Okay. I'm performing in Vulgar Fest. Vulgar Fest. Oh, right okay. on. Mm -hmm. War Beast. And yeah. yes, the. Oh, that's uh, yeah, the, the guy from Bruce, Rick and Mortis. Yeah, yeah, Bruce so look, Corbett's coming back. I'm okay. Sideshow Rats. Do you see Sideshow Rats That's there? Because um, I love rats. I'm so, not playing any music. <laughs> I'm going to be the one like, so who, the dangerous. Who's it, Logan? Demon Seed, right? Yeah, Demon Seed, man. War local, Beast, Demon Seed, and Sideshow Rats, which is Janie Slash, should be on stage with these bands doing all that crazy stuff. Oh, that's awesome. That's with great. her with her group. And then 383, Coilback. That's October right. 20th at the rail. I think tickets are only 10 bucks too. Man. Are they? Okay, that's good. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And that so is four days these. after your Dallas gig at Gas Monkey. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll be on tour. I'll try right. to make it out to that. I, I like awesome. Rig and Mortis like, quite a bit. So um, yep. it's, uh, it's, I'm glad a, he's it's like, different. I'm glad he's well, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Bruce is a great guy, man. Bruce is uh, great. But yeah. he's, he's like really into horror stuff too, right? Oh, yeah. so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Rigor cool. Mortis always has a uh, has a booth set up at Texas Frightmare. So, so. well, so why, last, why are they? Warby's last music video had Ed Neal from the Sex Chainsaw yeah, Massacre yeah. in it. The they, hitchhiker. Oh, the hitchhiker. Oh. Yeah. Well, my question is, why are they doing it at the Real Club and not the Ridgely? Because isn't the Ridgely like the classic like venue? Ridgely hasn't been like what Ridgely was in, in quite some time. Mm -hmm. I know it. But it's I know it's kind of coming reopened. back. Yeah, it's. It's reopened, but uh, I don't. It really looks know. nice now. It's, it's, it's very got, like, clean and nice. Yeah. I did very like, three yeah. venues, like yeah. inside of it. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's like way different than like when we used to play there, like yeah. ten years ago. Man, that place has changed a lot. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's Ridgely and Rail, and and both of them have good metal shows. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah Well, and Tomcats too. Tom. And Tomcats, yeah. Across I've the street. never been Across to Tomcats. That's my. It's probably my favorite venue. Like no in kidding. the Metroplex. Cool. Like no wow. offense to Deep Ellum. Yeah. Because I love I love Deep Ellum and everything. I, I spent like a Reno's. Lot of time. Reno's. Yeah, Reno's is great. Yeah. Um, but Tomcats definitely is just I don't know. Feels more like home, I guess. I guess I'm from Fort Worth, so it's oh. it was always just like a 20 minute drive for well, me. Fort Worth so. is great though. They've got great metal shows there. It yeah, seems like definitely. it's like the town you go to see metal in. Well, but I feel like the Rail Club and. Uh, Tomcats. I mean, this is just an outsider's perspective. Like, I'm, I live here now, but I'm not from here. But uh, that, that seems like, so like, you have to have a reason to go there. It's yeah, not, yeah, not for like sure. You, not it's, like Deep Ellum, where yeah. you're like, you could just stumble in. But, stumble oh, there's metal show. Let's check out the metal show. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a, it's know. a destination. Yeah, area. like you're yeah, if you're sure. going to Tomcats, like you have a reason to be there. Well, Absolutely. And when, yeah. when we go to Fort Worth, it's usually like we have a reason to be there, and then we're like, oh, we're gonna drive that far. Well, we should find other shit to do. <laughs> yeah. Make a day of it. It's like a trip. I saw somebody on on my Facebook feed going, I'm going to Fort Worth for the day. Anybody have any ideas of anything I should do on out Fort Worth there? has great thrifting. Because you're like going and out and out. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely, man. Need to do shit in Good Fort to know. Um, no, you know what? One of the girls in my troop, the one that with the snake, she yeah. goes thrifting in Fort Worth all the time, and she has the most incredible shit. And I'm like, where'd yeah. you find that thrift store? And I'm like, I yeah. go to the ones here, and there's nothing. Yeah, I just have no. a panic attack and leave. Fort Worth has it's great so, thrifting. So Denison has good antiquing. <laughs> really? I think so. Uh, man, I'm really into like like collecting furniture that yeah. I don't need. Like. Oh. You have I space just, for that? No, not oh. at all. Not but it at might all. need it for a movie. I've got a giant a movie, tube though. TV. Like, what? Yeah. That's incredible. Well, let me and ask like, you this. I'm looking for like a vintage like uh, like cabinet for the stereo equipment my Moran speakers that I got. Cool. Right. You help me out with that? You got you got a vintage like stereo cabinet you don't need? Give me about a week. Man. A week? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no fighting in Fort Worth. <laughs> 
So look, there's, there's some, some other people that just are great thrifters. Yeah, it's like, so fun, even if you don't get anything. It's insane. Like, I, there's another girl that I could be like, I need this costume, and it looks like this, and she's like, I'm on it. I love the smell of a thrift store. And she'll show up with it, and it'll look identical <laughs> like, to what I asked. The only one that she had struggles with was my second carry prom dress, because the other one got thrown away. Because I do a carry routine, and she bought me all my prom dresses from thrift stores. So it's like man, I'm struggle. Yeah, but thrifting is. If I could make a job out of thrifting, like I, you probably I feel like can. you could on eBay. I don't know. Right. Like, no, no, no. Maybe you uh, like, film it. Could. Make a little uh, s of, of uh, a documentary vintage, log or something. Vintage yeah. documentary. Furniture. How I went broke thrifting. Vintage furniture. Spent all my money buying fifty cent items. <laughs> <laughs> that would, I would watch that. I would because I would be I like, would. man, I've, I've been there. It's relatable. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's relatable. I, I, yeah. Okay. We have some other events Shameless coming up. Plugging. Shameless Deadly plug. Shameless plug. Five years anniversary is this Saturday at Wits End. Five dollars. Come check it out. There it is, right there. There you go. That's one of her performers licking okay. that sharp object. It, it, that's a writing crop. It's not sharp. Oh, okay. It's a and It's a writing crop. This Saturday in Deep Ellum, her troupe celebrates their five year, mm -hmm. yes, five year anniversary performing in Deep Ellum at Wits End. Mm -hmm. Great. Each club. month they bring a wild, <laughs> wild show. And we're going to have the Dead Girl Circus opening, and Responsible Johnny's closing out the night. A punk band. Yeah, playing, okay. playing after uh, after the burlesque. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, we burlesque. just did a burlesque show not that long ago. Oh, really? At Wits End. Yeah, the... That was my it. show. Yeah. Was it? I wasn't there because I was in Ohio. I was going to say, I didn't see you. No, I was like, you did a burlesque <laughs> show at Wits End? What other burlesque troops? It's my... It was... Yeah, I wasn't there. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, so the there. point yeah. is, sometimes her burlesque troop opens for metal bands. It's a very bands. interesting oh, okay. yeah. dynamic. I had never seen anything like that. Like, it was opening... The burlesque was opening. And then, like, you had metal bands playing after that. And I... The crowd that it draws is it, just a crazy dynamic yeah. that I had never seen before. It's definitely an original concept, if nothing else. Did you see that Satan on stilts? I did. That Badass. Guy? Badass. <laughs> yeah, he's a. Uh, and Jesus was great. there. It's great. Jesus was there. I heard Jesus made an appearance. All right. Jesus. Jesus. Did you now, see Jesus? I mean, he makes an appearance in all of our hearts. I don't think so. <laughs> all right, all right, look. No, hey, let, let's move there's, on. There's a guy. No, but there's a guy at our show who shows up dressed like Jesus, and Satan and Jesus always take photos together. Oh, it's really okay. funny. I don't, I don't recall is, seeing Jesus. His name is Bob. Bob. Bob the Jesus. Bob the Jesus. So it's always funny because people will be, like, so confused and drunk and deep on him, and they'll, yeah. like, bow down to him and confess their sins, and oh. he just stares at them. and He, he doesn't get paid enough. Robert the Christ. <laughs> Robert the Christ. All right, so look. <laughs> The other events coming up that we support, <laughs> along with our partner, Corpse Factory, are, uh, and you can you can pull up either one, Ziggy, it's fine with me. We got a lot of cool things coming up at Gas Monkey, your gig, October 16th. Yes, uh, but we support them and our partners oh, wow. with them. Oh, Look yeah. at this. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. be on tour. That's sad. That's in early November. Yeah. Wait, wait. Is it the uh, 4th? November 4th. And so oh, they're doing a screening of the movie. Yeah, and they're along with live score, yeah, that's awesome. Thing, yeah. yeah, I saw um, Fabio Frizi do that with uh, Fulci's Beyond or The Beyond. So. Oh, yeah, cool. nice. yeah, yeah, at Texas he, Theater. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. he did that at Texas Theater. I yeah. love whenever they do that. Even uh, te uh, not Texas Theater, but um, they do that. But Alamo Draft House has done yes. accompaniments to movies, silent yeah. films, like they did it for Metropolis. Oh, okay. Which was fucking an orchestra because it was fucking incredible. He had never seen Metropolis. I was like, the first time he ever got to see Metropolis was like right. with a full orchestra. I was like, this, I mean, I watched Almo, it with the Almo's nine great. Nails. And I'm not never been because I, I work there. Uh, <laughs> you work there? Oh, what yeah, do you I, work at? Uh, Denton, well, the Denton oh, okay. Location. So you don't have to tell me on air if you don't want to. Go see no, the okay. Denton location. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I want to scroll through these uh, Gas the, Monkey. How okay. is the Denton location? It's new, right? Yeah, it is. It's brand new. It opened in July. Oh wow, there's a new one in Las Cleanest too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, they they're on a roll. I with this opening love room. Alamo. I've realized when I went to go see Hereditary last yeah. weekend how spoiled I am by Alamo. Because if anybody you're not allowed to talk at all yeah. or else no, they will they kick throw you out. You out. No refunds, no questions. No refunds, no questions. You Could just you say write it. Movie? What? What? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was big adventure. Oh, <laughs> when he's at the Alamo oh. and taking a tour. Adobe, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I know that you write on a note card. You can be like the person to the left of me yeah. is talking, and they will go warn them once, and then if you they have to warn them again, they're like, you have to leave. I feel really? like that's yes, pretty awesome. It is so great. I watch so many quiet movies. Only in Texas. It's I supported. Amazing. I supported no, Alamo's I and Alamo's there. not just in Texas. Like I don't want to like make it sound like I'm trying to push my job, but like it, it even before I worked there, like it was 
It's a, they are great establishment got great for, for great. cinema. Mm-hmm. Winter Sun is another band coming up. Yeah. Beer. Oh, cool. Uh, at Gas Monkey, September 19th. So that's right around the corner. Absolutely. Winter Sun. Cool band. And, uh, all right, Karak Angren, okay. along with a couple other cool bands, too. That's Friday, October 19th. Is it Morse Prince PMS on that one? Okay. I can't read out my glasses on, but uh, good show. Sure. Yep. And Wolfhart. Wolfhart. Don't Wolfhart. Know, not familiar. Definitely interested in that. And uh, Devil Driver with okay. Ginger, uh, Metalcore Black. Band, okay. and Raven Black, uh, who we like a lot, too, is later in October. So a lot of good stuff. What venue is that at? Gas read. Monkey also. Oh, uh, live. Okay. All these are at Gas Monkey. So, so quick question. Your hey, gig is coming too. next October month. October 23rd. Yeah. Sorry, we're talking about Hate, Hate Breed and Gore. Gore. Oh, yeah. Are they yeah. touring together? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's cool. The Gore, Core, Metal, and More. Can can yes. people can fans show up in Halloween costume for your show on October 16th? I mean, I would be okay with that. Good. Yeah. Can, I mean, can fans want. show up, dress up as you for Halloween? That Even so, better. Oh, okay. You, you be. in the video. <laughs> yeah. The, the werewolf. Uh, the werewolf? Oh, man. what a That would be a cool little, like... Gimmick. Oh, like you, See how you, many werewolves? That's how you know, like they watch the video. Oh, it's like the be- werewolf costume. The, yeah, the judging true fan. Like, <laughs> I mean, right, I'm not a triangle opposed. on his head. Now, uh, we want to also mention our partner, and that is Corpse Factory. CorpseFactory.com is their website, and they also have a great Facebook page too. And they have a lot of cool stuff, including collectibles and clothing that Janie Slash likes to wear. And yeah. uh, all kinds of stuff. It's Corpse Factory. They will be at Cult Classic at the end of the month. And oh. STD is playing that. Yes, STD is playing you, that are you? too. I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Sorry, but I'm STD is playing that, and that's okay. great opportunity for them. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Cult Classic is a horror fest coming up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think I heard you yeah, guys yeah, yeah. Yeah. last week. Okay. Fangoria is gonna be there. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah Fangoria. In yeah. fact, it's it's at uh, it's right where they filmed. It's Texas right by Chains. the gas the yeah, gas, station. gas station. It's like right you can down go the to the bridge, and they have a bunch of different locations where Texas Chains on that space. What you're outside Austin? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Gas okay. Yeah. It's kind of cool because there's like throughout you know you have the the gas station and they sell barbecue there, which is mm-hmm. awesome, and they have cabins where you can sleep. And then, oh, that's awesome. Um, and then also, you could, they have a, the in bridge. Kingsland. Well, and the bridge is over there. And then yeah. in Kingsland, they like took the house and turned it into like a restaurant. Man. But they still upstairs. It's called like they have, still have like memorabilia. Ziggy, upstairs. Ziggy's got a heads up for us. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Our Lady of the Inferno. Of yes. The Inferno. All right, this is the event coming up Friday. This Friday. Oh, this is Friday. Okay. Yeah. At yeah. Deep Vellum. Books. Yes. Deep Vellum Books. Yeah. So uh, very cool, and that author will be there. Yeah, Preston. And mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. and this is a badass title, Our Lady of the Inferno. <laughs> so so it means it's got to be a good book, right? Absolutely. And yeah. it's Fangoria presents. Yes. Yep. There's the event page right there. And uh, so everybody just spend your whole weekend in Zebellum. Absolutely. Yeah. Friday night for that, and then Saturday night for the five year anniversary of Deadly Sins. It's gonna be fun. What, what time is that on Friday? I might be there. Seven. So I'm not, seven uh, seven uh, to nine. I won't be there actually. I will not. I will be. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm working. Oh, I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be okay. teaching. So okay, G- it, guitar lessons and s- style lessons and oh uh, yeah, like uh, well that'll be like probably like a, more like a rehearsal like band coaching type of situation. Cool. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah, changing lives. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah. Yeah, bring more people into death metal. Actually, no. I mean, this is uh, no, nah, like <laughs> no, no. It's well, other no. stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ziggy. Now, all right, this. Jamie Slash. Yes, this Tuesday, uh, you can come see me host Bingo. Oh. So much fun. I like Bingo. It's yeah, burlesque Bingo. bingo. Oh. It's free. So it's what? five rounds. Hmm? Where's it at, though? Is it like at a venue? Duke's like Ice It's House at a bar. bar okay. Duke's Ice House in Addison. It's just kind of a fun bingo. Um, it's five rounds, and it's okay. for less. So between each round, somebody gets a prize. It's a gift certificate to the restaurant. And mm-hmm. then I remove one article of clothing until I'm down to tassels and a thong or panties. Whatever it is I decide so it's to wear. Naughty that day. Bingo. Last round, we ended up doing a bonus round, which is where I put my clothes back on. No, 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 no. Don't say that. I did. This is they bingo. They were really is, into it until This the is end. take off your clothing bingo. It was until the bonus round. I got to get redressed somehow. Okay. You put music on and I did They were very impressed, by the way. All right. That's on Tuesday. If they record it and then just play it back in reverse, it'll be like you took your clothes off twice. Exactly. We, we got to show some pictures See? and we only have a couple of minutes. That, we just need a filmmaker's perspective. <laughs> I want to show you some fun things. And uh, so every Thursday, I DJ metal at Braindead in Deep Ellum. 
Yes. And so they, uh, this is uh, this is uh, the band called Beer Break. Uh, Logan knows them. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Crazy and band. You played with them last night. Yes, we and did. And that's Electric Vengeance, a uh, good thrash the band. The homies well. and EV. Yeah. So they set up outside. Yeah. I do a DJ set early in the evening, and then the bands come on later, and uh, and it's all free. Yeah. Right in front of the restaurant. The we walk scare by people crowd. away. Yeah, the walk-by <laughs> crowd is amazing. Just their reactions are just... It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. Look, I, I just want to tell you, great luck on the tour, man. Oh, thank you and, so much. And, I appreciate and, that. Yeah, just want you to have fun, and, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing you on stage in Dallas. And yeah. just blast yeah. it away, man. Make our ears really, really throb the next morning. Okay. That's... <laughs> I'll talk to the front of house guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. I use earplugs now. Okay. I do, man. Yeah. I do. Yeah. So, I don't blame you. And, and good luck with your filming and all the things. Thank you. I'm yeah, for Logan. Yeah, yeah, best product. of luck, man. Yeah, best of luck to you. You're a friend of the show, so stay in touch with us. Yeah, Absolutely. let us know. We want to come see it when it screens. Okay, I will. I'll... Uh, yeah, people keep asking me about screenings, and uh, You're not I really even like there yeah yet. I don't have a I don't have an answer for that because I haven't even filmed the movie yet. So as soon as I know, sure. you guys will know too. What else uh, do yes, we need to loop. mention, guys, that we've skipped? Uh, you can see me tonight at One Nostalgia Place. Uh, the show starts at nine. I'll probably be going up around nine thirty, and then uh, getting really drunk. So come out and see me. Go see him. They get drunk. You stand up. He does stand up. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, he's funny. I knew that. I think. I, I know it's confusing. <laughs> I think he, I think he got For the sake of this, it's he confusing because yeah. he's sitting down right now. But later, he'll be. Sick. Oh, oh. Janie slash. <laughs> is that part of your burlesque routine? No. You just tell jokes. I'm she is funny. very funny. She's good. I'm not funny. <laughs> no, is there okay. anything else, guys, that we need to mention? Well, it's shameless time plug time. To... Anything. Wrap it up. Instagram at Benedictus Film. Got it. Facebook. Yeah. Okay, good. Artsofficial.com. You can pre order uh, pre order the album Visitant. Do it now. Do uh, it now. Yeah. Do it now. Do it now. Absolutely. You can get a cassette version of it for only eight ninety nine. Yes. Absolutely. Man, that is a good Or a CD price. for only nine ninety nine. Man. Uh, uh, Arsisofficial. Get, get, get the whole collection. Yeah. Visitant. Visitant. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank Have you. a good you. week. Have a great we'll week. See you next Sunday. Benedictus is my debut short film as both a writer and director. After an encounter in the woods with a deadly cult, a stubborn suburban girl's relationship with her religious father becomes more compromised than she ever could have imagined. My current creative partners and I are seeking your support to gather the right crew with the right equipment to help give this film the life that I know it has. Please, take a look at the perks that we have listed, and if you feel so inclined, please donate. But most importantly, please share the word and spread. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. If you'd like to keep up with us on social media and follow updates, you can follow us on Instagram, at BenedictusFilm. And for any questions, comments, inquiries, and so forth and so on, you can email us at BenedictusFilm at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Sunday we're here live. We're gonna give you 90 minutes of live, great irreverent shit. <laughs> and also just talk about Satan and talk about movies and talk about metal and talk about Jenny Slash's uh, weekly dose of horror. Yeah, Texas Friday my weekend. I am here with D Wallace. Don't just don't start my boobs all the time. Sure, I do get comments from occasionally religious fanatics. I have seen people yeah. stopping down who want to wag their finger at me for a ring tank. The Gold Space Show rules! <laughs>